Hi there everyone, Austin from Mini Painter Studio here again with another painting tutorial. This week we're going to be doing a Black Legion Terminator, Chaos Terminator to be exact. Um, so if you've ever painted Chaos before, you know you're going to be painting some trim. So that's what we're starting off with here. Did an undercoat of Chaos Black Spray, apropos. Um, and now I'm coming in with some Retributor Armor. Uh, now Retributor Armor is uh, a little bit thin and it was coming off a little bit thin here too. Um, not sure exactly why. I think maybe it was because it was the Chaos Black Spray and not um, doing a layer of Abaddon Black. Uh, so I did end up doing two layers of that Retributor Armor. But it, as you can see, it looks nice and smooth right there. Um, it's good to be neat, but you don't have to because you're going to be coming in again um, later on with some black. Uh, so yeah, now we're just going to wash all that over with Agrax Earthshade. This is a kind of a technique um, I decided to do on my own. I know the the new thing to do with uh, gold is to do the Reglan Flesh Shade Wash, and that's, uh, I mean, that's like the Stormcast Eternal recipe. Uh, but I wanted something a little bit dingier because I feel like these Chaos Space Marines have been around for a long time. So uh, I went with Agrax Earthshade. And now we're going to be doing an all over dry brush. Uh, well, not all over, just over the uh, gold armor parts with the uh, Iron Breaker. Um, as you can see, I magnetized his arm so that it would be easy for me to uh, get in there um, to show off uh, his face and stuff like that. And of course, I decided to cover the entire model with my hand. Um, so sorry about that, guys. Uh, but yeah, so Iron Breaker, I wanted it to be brighter than Lead Belcher. Um, so that was the next step up. I didn't want it to be like a Rune Frank Steel or a Stormhost Silver. Um, and this is a really easy way to just get a nice little rough highlight. Um, and I emphasize rough because, again, these are Chaos Space Marines. They've been around for thousands of years um, fighting endless battles. So the gold, to me, doesn't have to look pristine. I, I like to have a little bit of a, um, a worn look to it. All right, now the next uh, big color of coverage here is going to be Lead Belcher. So obviously I'm going to hit up his axe uh, and all the other metal parts. I keep on forgetting that I magnetized his arm because I don't normally do that. Um, so it kept on moving on me. Uh, so I, I usually just end up taking it off uh, in most of these clips. Um, but you'll see all those spikes on the back. The spikes on the back are really intimidating. Uh, I don't know, just, just when you first build the model, it's like, man, that's a lot of detail. But... If you figure out simple ways of accomplishing those things, um, it's not scary at all, but it looks really good on the mini. So I got that little chain um, on him, and then I'm going to keep his weapon really simple. So I'm just going to be doing um, all over with that lead belcher and then doing some null oil. So I'm just keeping it real simple. Um, but yeah, so you'll see here I'm hitting those back pipe things that all Terminators have. Um, and then I also do the, uh, what do they call it? That's in the joints, like the back of the knee and the elbows. I did those metal too. All right. So the next, uh, most prevalent color is going to be Xandri dust. Cause he's got those big tusks coming out of his face. Um, which is one of the coolest parts of the model to me. So because, uh, it's on his face, I wanted to make, try my best to make it look really cool. And it ended up looking nice. Um, he also has this little horn on his nose that you could do metal, you could do gold. I decided he didn't really have a lot of organic stuff on this mini, so I wanted more. So um, I did a lot of the spikes that are all around him uh, in Xandri Dust just to give it more of an organic feel because it's more bone rather than metal. Um, but you can go either way. Uh, that's up to you. Um, you'll see I just pick out those little things sticking out right there. But yeah, um, now I'm going to be hitting up all the metal parts with just a nice coat of Null Noil. I actually forgot to film the Agrax Earthshade part, but after you do the Null Noil on all the metal parts, just go on in and hit the uh, Xandri Dust parts with Agrax Earthshade. Another tip is that um, on the box art and a lot of like demon stuff, the, the bone um, has a really dark feel to it. So what I did was I did like three or four layers going more towards the tips of the uh, the tusks um, just to get it a little bit darker and it came out really cool looking so you'll see that um, I also did all the bone and uh, like that skull and, and the the different horns that are sticking out with the agriculture shade too but you'll see here I'm um, just throwing on that null oil um, yeah so for me with uh, Black Legion 
It's definitely one of the um, more iconic bad guy factions, uh, but I don't see a lot of pretty looking Black Legion stuff. Um, that's just me personally. I see a lot of the old Chaos Space Marines are painted Black Legion, but number one, the Chaos Space Marine models are really old. They don't look very nice. Um, and I don't know, the paint job just seems a little old. But as you can see, I'm just doing the handle of his axe with some Rack Earth Flesh. I'm going to throw some uh, Agrax Earth Shade on that as well. I'm also just doing uh, these Terminators have these little bags. I don't know. They must be superstitious or something, and they carry these things around. But yeah, he's got a couple bags hanging, so I do that in Mornfang Brown. But like I was saying, uh, I just did not see a lot of cool-looking Black Legion stuff. And uh, since I thought it was such a cool... Uh, faction uh, when I started it I just wanted to make them look as as good as I can and since since the first model I painted of theirs um, I've been addicted so I just this is actually the first uh, Black Legion Terminator I'm doing and he is coming out really cool as you can see um, so right now I'm gonna go in and uh, just because some of the iron breaker got on some of the black I'm doing his eyes next so I just wanted to fill in his eye with black, just to have a good starting point. Um, but yeah, his eyes, I'm doing the same as the rest of my Black Legion army, um, which is kind of a bluey tone. You can definitely go red. Uh, you can go a lot of different colors, but uh, I ended up doing that. But yeah, you can see the, the minis really starting to gather, come together. Um, get that arm out of the way. So this is Aramon Blue. Um, it's the layer highlight uh, for a thousand suns, but it just has a really nice vibrant tone to it. The first time I used it, I said I got to use this more. So um, you can see I'm just filling in that eye socket. Uh, there's not really a socket. It's kind of the Terminator eyes kind of stick out a little bit, um, but I'm just painting that eye with the Aramon blue, making sure I get a good coverage of it. And don't worry, we're doing this again early on because uh, you can always touch it up with, with just Abaddon Black. Um, but yeah, you'll see just that Aramon blue really pops, and uh, it looks really nice. So now we're going to come in the other eye. Tough angle because he's got his uh, combi bolter right in the way, but you can see. If you just take your time, you'll be able to get in there and uh, get a good line of that going. Um, the second step for this is uh, you do a thin line of Fenrisian Gray. Um, so I know a thousand suns and space wolves together, it's blasphemy, but you'll see it just, it, uh, it gives it a nice light point. And since it's kind of on the blue scale, um, it pairs really well. So you just have that filled in arm on blue, and then you just do a thin line in the middle of Fenrisian Gray, and it gives it a really nice highlight. You can see that right there. And for me, doing the eyes on minis is always exciting because uh, to me it just looks like, I don't know, just doesn't have any life to it. And then once you get those eyes in there, boom, he looks awesome. It's like there's somebody in there. Um, but yeah, so like I was saying, the Black Legion, the, the only time I ever really saw a cool-looking Black Legion was um, in the, the most recent... Chaos Space Marine Codex, they have some Chosen painted up in the Black Legion scheme, and they look really cool. And those are the first time that I said, okay, that looks pretty awesome. I think I might want to start that army. Um, the old uh, Chaos Lord in Terminator armor, the uh, standard pose one, um, he had that kind of medieval-looking mask with the horns, just the, uh, the axe and the, the combi bolter sticking out. Um, that was also kind of... It almost made me start them as my first army, just that picture. But you'll see, I, uh, I kind of went in a little bit hot with that Fenrisian Gray, so I'm just tidying it up a little bit with the Aramon Blue. Um, it was just a little bit thick, so I just wanted to get back in there. And then I had a little bit too much Aramon Blue in there, so uh, you'll see me touch that up with some black later. But right now we're just getting a little dot in the back corner just to give it that final little highlight. Um, this is just white, and uh, you can see it just gives it that little glow, gemmy effect to it. And you'll see here, I get a good touch, no paint. Good touch, no paint. 
So this is just, I don't know, for me, white just dries so quickly. So you have to keep it thin, but then if it's too thin, uh, things like this happen where you'll get a good touch and it's way too big. So you'll see it's way bigger than the dot that I got on the left eye. So I'm just gonna come in again. Uh, I think I did black. Now I touch it up a little bit with some arm and blue just to make that big glob of white a little bit smaller. And then I'm pretty happy, but then I have to shape the eyes again with some black. Um, but yeah, once you get those eyes down on those, those models, it's just a very exciting part of painting the miniature to me because uh, it just looks so cool after that. Now I'm going to highlight the tusks because I'm working on that face. And you'll see here, it's very stark, but that's kind of what I wanted. Um, because uh, I did so many layers of the Agrax Earth shade on his tusks, I just really wanted to, like, especially the top parts of it, just to really pop um, and bring attention. Because uh, that's like the main feature of the mini is those tusks in his face. There's another main feature that you'll be seeing. Uh, you can see it right there. It's just that Space Marine helmet on one of his spikes. Um, so my Black Legion army I'm actually doing as part of Armies on Parade this October. Um, and the diorama I'm going to be doing is when the, the Black Legion was attacking McCraig, right when, uh, what was it, the Eldar and um, Belisarius Call were taking uh, the new suit of armor to uh, reboot Gilliman to wake him up from his stasis. Uh, so I was rereading that, and I just thought it was really cool, all the... Uh, how McCraig itself was being attacked by a huge army of Black Legion, and they were almost going to finish them off, and then uh, Reboot Gilliman wakes up and kind of turns the tide. But there's just really cool parts, like uh, a, what is it? A Storm Raven gets taken over by uh, some raptors, and they crash it into the building, and then they jump out and put some, like, uh, like chaos flag down and it just allows all the terminators to teleport right into Robert Gilman's um, chambers and it's really cool but you can see here now this is a big part of doing black legion is the black um, so it makes sense but so after we did that dry brush to get a nice rough uh, highlight on the gold um, obviously some of that gets on the black that we had before so this step takes a little bit but it's really important because it really makes that black just uh I know some people get tired of looking at black on armor and there are a lot of armies with that armor, but when you get a nice clean looking um, black power armor, I think it looks really cool. So you'll see I'm just tidying everything up. There's definitely some marks on there. Um, and there's these little spikes that go like into the tusk area. So I wanted to make sure I got those too. Um, but you'll be able to see it clearer um, on the next step that I do. I decided to uh, do his shoulder pad, and you'll see on the shoulder pad itself, there's all that silver from when I dry brushed, and then you just go in with some Abaddon Black. You can see it just makes it so clean looking, and it's like I know it's black, so it's kind of weird to say it, but when you have a nice clean black, it is vibrant, and obviously right next to that gold. So after I did all that, you can see him. He's looking pretty awesome. But of course, you got to take them to that next level. Um, so we're going to come in and do some edge highlighting. Um, so I, there's a lot of ways you can highlight black. Uh, I like to do a very subtle one. Um, so that's the Eshin Gray and Dawnstone combo. Um, it doesn't make it pop quite as much as uh, some of the other ways of doing it, but I don't want it to be too drastic. I think the gold does a good job of making the armor pop. So I just want to get in there. Yeah, edge highlight, basically any edge you see, just get in there. Um, one thing that I didn't do on this Terminator, which I have done on some of my other uh, Black Legion Marines, is um, so when there's like an indented space, so for instance on a shoulder pad, you have the black on the shoulder pad and the gold, and the gold is kind of the edge highlight, um, but you'll see in like uh, uh, the Evy Metal team, they do like a line right beside where the gold and the black meet. Um, I decided not to do that this time just to see if I could get a good effect um, without it. 
and I did kind of like it, but I think I might go back to it in the future. But you'll see I got that nice ashen gray on his face, and this is the Dawnstone highlight, and I'm sorry, in most of this footage, my hand was covering up everything. Um, but basically what you do is, uh, with the Eschen Gray, you do a full line. So wherever there's an edge, you do that whole line. And then with the Dawnstone, you just catch the corners. Um, so if there's a prominent line, you can get the whole thing. But pretty much anytime there's a right angle, uh, just hit that with a, with like a corner of Eschen Gray. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Dawnstone. Um, so you can see, once I took my hand away, it just brightens it up, makes it pop a little bit more. Um, and I'm not doing the entire line, and that's kind of the illusion that happens. So you'll see here, I finished doing all the edge highlighting um, on his armor. And now is a fun part, because we get to, as I told you, my diorama was going to be the Black Legion attacking uh, McCraig right before Reboot Gilliman wakes up. So obviously this guy's going to have an ultramarine helmet um, on one of his spikes. Uh, so I have, I painted one ultramarine before, you'll see him in my intro, intro video. It's a really simple paint scheme. You just slap on some, uh, a Craig blue, get that ax out of the way again. Um, you throw on that McCraig blue and you'll see as I go. But what's really cool about this helmet that's on there is that there is, a there's like a slash in it, like from an ax. Um, and so I made my guy carry an ax just to kind of fill into that theme. Um, but those little dangling bags that he has going on, um, I just wanted to highlight those just to take it to that next level. So you'll see I've got some Scrag Brown, which really works nicely with the Morn Fang Brown. It's like a orangey brown, and it just gives it a nice natural looking highlight. And this was just because the blue was drying and I was getting impatient. I wanted to be doing stuff rather than waiting for that blue to dry. Um, but then there's another bag hanging right by a uh, Space Marine helmet. So I just wanted to highlight that one as well. Um, but yeah, after getting into the Black Legion, I started reading the Black Legion uh, novels by Aaron Dembski Bowden, I believe. Um, and they're really cool. There's a lot of cool. Um, storylines going on there so again while waiting for that blue to dry i'm just highlighting first i did those bags and i'm going in with another layer of rackarth flesh on the grip for his axe um so yeah you see it's just do a line near the top and that's really all you need um it's something that i like about uh painting something like chaos space marines and orcs is that having them a little bit dirty is okay um all right so i just hitting up the metal parts. Um, it's easy to want to skip doing like the ultramarine helmet uh, to a high standard just because it's not the main feature but when you do go in there and at least give it a tabletop look um, it really gives the model a lot of character. Um, but you can see that kind of uh, gash that's in his helmet there um, from presumably the axe that slashed him in the face. But yeah, there's just you just want to get in that grill um, with the with the lead belcher and then those little things on the outside. I was looking at the box art to see where exactly they put the metal parts. Um, so yeah, the metal's in there, and now we are going to be doing a um, I think they call it pin washing, um, but it's basically instead of doing an all over shade, you just take a smaller one of your brushes and you just let the uh, the wash go into the recesses of the uh, the miniature so you'll see like any any part that there's like a little recess I just go in with my extra small artificial layer brush which has some lone oil in it and I just follow that line and it's a really cool way of uh, a different way of doing washing uh, sorry covering up the face again with my hand I was trying a different angle with the camera so sorry about that guys um, and then there's the metal too so the metal parts you just cover that and then lone oil um, like in his grill and stuff like that. And then also you want to make sure that you get it in the eye sockets because the eye sockets, uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted to make them red and give it the old uh, Space Marine lens effect, but somebody had asked in a previous video in the comments if I could do lenses, so uh, I decided to do it as well. All right, so I just wanted to do, while that wash was drying, I wanted to do a quick, a quick little... Um, rough like uh, 
weathering effect to his axe. I didn't want to go crazy with these weapons. Um, it's not. It's definitely not the focus of the minis, and I'm doing a lot of them, so I didn't want to go too crazy on those. But basically, I took uh, some Iron Breaker, which is the step above the uh, lead belcher, and you just take one of your thin brushes and you just kind of do some like vertical lines, thin vertical lines there, um, and it just gives it the appearance that uh, it's chopped into a bunch of stuff. All right, so now that wash is dry, so we're gonna come in just with Calgar Blue um, and Edge Highlight, the Ultramarine's helmet. Uh, there's, you can go another step further, but I felt like um, a layer and a highlight would be, would be just enough. Because again, this guy is not the main feature of the model, but you do want it to look pretty. So again, just doing some Edge Highlighting. Anytime you see a raised surface, just give it a little line. Take your time with it, and on such a small thing like that, it's 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 fun to do it, hi highlighting on details like that, because uh, you know it's not going to take too long. And I think I did the edge highlight on the wrong side of the um, on the wrong side of the the gash. Um, I did it on the top. I think you're supposed to do it on the bottom, because yeah, when you think about how light's hitting it, it's probably going to be hitting that bottom part. But it still came out looking okay. But I'm going to remember that for next time. So now I just wanted to do his lenses real kick, quick. And I think my hand covered it most of the time. So very sorry about that, guys. But basically, you go in there. The Nolan Oil did a good job of uh, darkening that lens area. So then you just go in there, get a thin line of Mephiston Red. Um, and I could have gone a couple steps further with this, but I decided not to. Um, I just did the, the Mephiston Red and then just did a dot of uh, any white paint. Um, I use Reaper Miniature White, but you can definitely use White Scar or whatever the GW white paint is. Um, but yeah, you just go in there, get a tiny little dot in like uh, the back corner. But he's already looking cool. Uh -huh. And something weird happened. I was after I finished painting him, and I was looking at him. For some reason, <laughs> and I know it's a helmet, but the uh, ultramarine helmet almost had like a sad look to it. Um, but yeah, that's it for the ultramarine helmet. So now we're gonna do something cool. We're gonna do a little bit of freehand. This is another thing that I noticed about Black Legion, uh, particularly on their transfer sheets, is that. Uh, the Eye of Horus just looks horrible. It's like this yellow, like blocky looking thing. So I decided to, if I'm going to be putting that on there, then I'm going to be doing freehand. Um, so again, my hand is covered most of this. Freehand is difficult. So um, I think that's, I was kind of just, I would rather see the final effect than um, that. But basically you line up, you just do a cross in the middle and that's going to be the start of it. Um, and there was like that arrow already pointing in the middle of his, of, uh, his shoulder pad so that kind of helped me out. But this is a Reaper paint. It's red brick. It's a really great way to start red because it's so dark. Um, so basically you're going to just come in here and make an eye shape, a football shape with this. Um, and I went really thick. I probably would not go this thick next time, but I just wanted to make sure that I got good coverage. And so you'll see, I'm just kind of making like a football eye shape. And I saw this, uh, I actually just Googled Eye of Horus, um, and there was some artwork from one of the older books, and it showed a bunch of different iterations. And you can pretty much do whatever you want, um, but it was kind of like this fiery looking, like almost Eye of Sauron looking eye with the uh, with all the points uh, sticking around it. Um, so I just tried to emulate that. So basically, I just wanted to do a fiery looking eye with uh, the golden spikes at the back. Um, so next up, we have Deep Red, which is the next step up from... Uh, that other red that I just used, I forget what it's called. Um, and I kind of went thick on this one as well. But again, I wanted it to be a, a very deep looking red, like not too bright. So now you just come in and you kind of make a, just you kind of shape it out on the bottom right and then go into the top right of it. So start bottom left, drag it around all the way to the bottom. And then you go up um, like halfway up on the right side. You can see me doing that right there. Um, so let that dry, and then I'm going to come in with Mephiston Red and do the same similar shape, but just with uh, thinner this time. Um, and I love Mephiston Red, it's such a bright, vibrant red. So you see, I'm just doing that same shape that I did, 
just thinner this time. Not as thin as you can go because we're going to do one more layer doing um, Fire Dragon Bright after this. So you can see, but it just has a, it's getting a kind of ruby effect to it. Um, yeah, you'll see that. It's looking really cool. And freehand, I mean, I was afraid of freehand for a long time, so I totally understand if any of you guys are scared to, but, and not coming from like a drawing or painting background before doing miniature painting, um, that's basically all it is, so if you ever feel like giving it a go, try it. Just make sure your paints are thin, and if you mess up, you can just cover it up. So again, I'm doing that same similar shape I did with the other reds with Fire Dragon Bright, but just this one is thin and all the way to the right there. So yeah, the base of the eye is done. And then we're gonna come in, we're just gonna do like a slit for a pupil. I don't like it too thin, cause then it looks like a, I don't know, like a cat's eye or something. So again, we already have those lines from when we did that initial cross to line up the eye. Um, so you just follow that with uh, some Abaddon black. Obviously this is like already a very dark color, so I mean, it looks really cool, but it doesn't really pop. So I'm just going to come in and do a little dot of um, white just right by that, uh, at the top left part of that black pupil, just to make it pop a little bit. And that's why you leave that area dark. So you'll see there. First try. Boom. And that's looking really cool. But it's not done. You have to do all those spikes around the edges. Um, so I was doing a lot of this and then I, just because I was trying to hold my hand where you can see it, um, it wasn't coming out the way I wanted. So you can see me start it um, and you'll get the basic idea of it. But I did most of it off camera because I just, you know, freehanding is a little tough. So I wanted to make sure that it looked good. Um, you can see I'm just adding in those extra spikes. How many is it? One, two, three, four, eight spikes. Yeah. And then you want to add like little arrows pointing on each one as well. Um, another thing that you don't see me do here is that you want to do a ring around the eye with uh, Retributor armor, um, which I also do off camera. But you can already see that eye is coming together really nice. And you can see all of them have little arrows on the end of it now. And it's looking really nice. So all I got to do now is throw a base on this guy and uh, he's good to go. Um, so don't be afraid to try these guys out. If you want to see something painted, please leave me a comment. I'm looking for stuff to paint for you guys. Um, and I'd love to do anything you want. So just, yeah, leave me a comment.